Another little deal through there that we used to catch <coughs> the snipers once in a while. Most generally, uh, if you knew where they were and you, you were all around them, they didn't have no place to go, you could get them to surrender. But some of them were just, uh, just wouldn't. And the best place, the way that we found to get them out was to take a phosphorus grenade. Pull the pen and throw it into the building they was in and uh, forget about the whole thing because then within the time it exploded, within minutes the whole place was on fire. They either jumped or <laughs> stayed in there <laughs> and if they did come out, well, they, they didn't last long anyway because usually somebody had woken up on them. But anyway, we, uh, we took that and I said, where did we go from there? I don't... Well, we had some fighting to do up around Strasbourg somewhere after we took, those, took the city of Strasbourg. Uh, Strasbourg a big city then? Huh? Was Strasbourg a big city then? Yeah, pretty good size. Yeah. It was right on, uh, right on the Rhine River on the edge Were there any the tanks in there? Was you deal with tanks? A few. Their side or? Their side, but uh, they never bothered us too much. We were hmm. getting to the point then where we pushed them across the Rhine, see. What kind of tanks yeah. did you see? Huh? What kind of tanks were there? Tigers, there was uh, several Tigers and they had to mark what is the mark? Four. Mark, yeah, mark four. Mark. They weren't the biggest of tigers, but they were pretty close. The Panzer Mark Four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Those don't have the long barrel on it. They have the short, snubby barrel. Gee, I can't remember. I think it has a short, little snubby barrel. It's mostly an anti-personnel. Of course, when the tanks were involved and uh, we were infantry, we didn't. I didn't look at them too close. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but you got close to them when they swung that barrel around that towards you. you uh, it looked, kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know? Did they use the machine guns a lot on the tanks? Well, now, yeah, I guess they did. Uh, usually uh, t they'd uh, take one of the Tigers and they would uh, they would run in into a bank and dig it right into the bank so the only thing the turret and the gun was showing. Mm -hmm. And of course the machine gun. And they would use that. Another little deal they used uh, a lot when we were getting up to that section was they had 20 and 40 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. The and they used those on infantry too. That the 88? No, that was an anti-aircraft gun. Uh, they used them on us quite a bit too. We run into them several times. And those things, uh, they open up on a tank on it and it's just like a bunch of bumblebees when they hit that thing. And they, they're pretty powerful. <laughs> Explode. Uh, hell, shells about that long, and they come in series of. I seem like that one I saw. What was it? It was four or six. In a kind of a rack deal, and they they fire it out, and then you just set another rack right in there, whatever they had, and they would unlimber that one at you. Right? They used that quite a bit for shooting at the tanks and for infantry. They used that on us. Those are miserable, I'll tell you. And you say you could hear the sound of them, so you kind of knew when to run, when to get down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, been several times through in that area, too, where we had uh, uh, trouble with uh, what they called uh, screaming mamies. They were uh, mortars, but the mortar was on a kind of a round deal, and they rumbled when they fired them. And they would go, they would hear the, you'd hear go the, you'd hear the thing go whoosh, and then they would rumble in a whoosh, and then about six or eight, what was it, six, five, six, six or eight times. And they had, uh, I guess they had the ends of them cut. So they went, they went through the air, oh, they would just scream, make a hell of a noise. And uh, I remember uh, we uh, had some, we was going across the field up there, making an attack, and uh, they were shooting at us with those damn things. And we would wait till we heard the last. Whoosh, we hit the ground. You'd wait till you get six explosions, and then you'd get up and go again until you heard those. We were that close to where they were firing them. Right? <laughs> A little too close for comfort. 
we uh Were you like in a field or the woods or what? Those where we was going across was an open field. Jeez. That was uh, up around the Strasburg area and out through there. We hit areas too in that section too where uh, we would spread out we priced for a mile. About ten feet apart. And uh, you shot anything that moved. Or if they happened to surrender, why well, good. If they didn't, why <laughs> remember running across a sergeant and another guy wouldn't even had a machine gun when he was carrying. And we had, uh, I mean, I was in that bunch. The guy refused to drop the machine gun. And there must have been, oh, it must have been eight or ten of us fired at him. He just stood there and shook. He didn't go down. He just stood there and shook. He hit so many times. Every time he'd start down, they'd hit him again, you know. But he was, he was loaded with slugs, that guy. And the other guy just stood there and watched. He didn't. Didn't do a thing. Yeah. But the other guy, he had so many holes in him, he looked like a seal. Jeez. Um, and I run across a German there. I, I let him go too. I don't know why. I didn't have no place to put him. I couldn't take him with me. And I didn't want to get tied up from the rest of the outfit for this one guy. He <coughs> had a rifle and he was heading back. <laughs> so I, I just ignored him, let him go. But I let him go too. and. Uh, we, uh, they were, I think, we uh, messed around there for, in that area for quite a while. 